investigation one of cell cycle and cancer. We're going to look at three different normal tissues. The first one is this one, and this is normal human skin. We began by placing the slide on the stage in its lowest position and then raised it up until it comes into focus with the lowest objective. We can then find focus. And then we can translocate using the translocation knobs as seen here. And once we're focused at the lowest objective, we can begin to increase the power. At this point, we should only need to adjust the fine focus from here on out. So this is the image that we see. And it contains a number of different kinds of cells in different layers. The first layer, the outermost layer, is called the epidermis. And it consists mainly of dead cells. It protects the outside of our skin. Now the bulk of what we see in this particular view is the dermis, so this pink stained tissue. And it lies directly underneath the epidermis. In some sections, you also see the sebaceous gland, which is marked here with the X. Students may be interested to know that the sebaceous gland is involved in acne. Here we see a hair shaft, and in many sections, you'll see that the hair shaft extends out from the skin. You can't see much of the deeper structures unless we translocate to a different section of the slide, deeper than the dermis. And here we are, we see some of the subdermal structures, the hair papilla, which is the part of the hair that actually grows at the root or the hair root. Also in this layer, we have a lot of Oedipus tissue in the form of Oedipus cells. These are essentially fat cells which give us a thermal insulation of our skin and this helps keep us warm. And finally, we see that there's also muscle cells, that's the pink tissue that's stained here. And it's the contraction of these cells that causes the hair on our arms or our legs to stand on end when we're frightened or cold. After we look at the slides, the students will then draw and label what they've seen in their SDRs. Now after viewing a slide, we switch back to the lowest objective lens and lower the stage completely before we remove the slide. Now the next slide we're going to look at is normal human lung. And we do exactly the same thing. We put the slide on the stage when it's in its lowest position, use the course adjustment to bring it up until it comes into focus. And then we can move over to the fine focus. And we'll pretty much be able to use the fine focus as we move up in magnification. This is the translocation knob again. So we can move the slide back and forth and up and down by moving the translocation knob. And once we start to get a good image, it's well focused, we can switch to higher magnifications and again just use the fine focus. So here we have an image of normal human lung tissue. We see the respiratory bronchial, which is the tube that leads up to the bronchial tubes and then to the trachea. Here's an alveoli. Actually, all these air-like sacs are alveoli, and this is where air is brought in and comes in contact with epithelial cells, which line the alveoli, which is indicated here by this X. And this is such a thin single cell layer that gases can readily pass across the membrane. And then we also will find blood vessels in the lung tissue. Here you see a blood vessel that is full with red blood cells. So this is where the oxygen, carbon dioxide comes in direct contact with blood and we'll draw all this in our SDR. Once again, we switch to the lowest magnification, lower the stage and remove the slide. Now the next slide is a kind of interesting slide. It's of human breast tissue. But it's interesting in that there's two sections of breast on the same slide. You see them here, one and two. One is inactive breast tissue, the other one is active breast tissue. Inactive breast tissue is the type of tissue that is present during most of a woman's life, except when she is uh, nursing a child. Once again, we focus, translocate until we find the structures that we're looking at. We're going to start with inactive 
breast tissue. We'll switch to a higher magnification for a good view. And take a look. Now much of what we see is connective tissue, which is stained pink in this section. In addition to the connective tissue, we also have Oedipus cells, or fat cells again, which are shown with the X. We saw that in the skin as well, if you recall. Now, a very important structure are the lobes, which you see a couple of them here stained in a purple color. And you're not going to find many lobes in inactive breast tissue. However, if we translocate over to the other section on the same slide, or the active breast tissue, we'll see that there's a great deal of lobe tissue indicating that a large amount of milk is being created by this tissue. We also see a lot of connective tissue in other places, adipose tissue as well. So these images are all drawn in the student data record. And this very simple investigation will set the stage for this entire cell. Later on, we're going to look at cancer tissue in the microscope and we'll compare it to normal lung tissue and normal breast tissue. So this ends the first investigation of cell cycling cancer. <laughs>